PLCs are usually available in two form factors, standalone and modular. Figure 1 shows a standalone Allen Bradley MicroLogic 1000 PLC, and Figure 2 shows a modular Allen Bradley Slick 500 PLC. Standalone PLCs are physically small, cheap, have limited programming capability, and do not have I.O. expansion capability. Therefore, standalone PLCs are suitable for small projects. The power supply, communication port, processor, input, and output channels of standalone PLCs are compactly encased in an enclosure. An example of a standalone PLC is the Allen Bradley 1761L16BWA MicroLogic 1000 PLC. This PLC consists of a switching power supply, processor, communication port, and I.O. channels encased in a gray plastic enclosure. Let's take a closer look at this PLC. These are the input channel terminals, and these are the output channels terminals. This is the communication port where the programming cable is plugged into. The programming cable allows engineers to upload, download, and troubleshoot PLC programs. Underneath the plastic cover is the logic board where the processor resides. And underneath the logic board is a switching power supply that converts 120 volt AC to different DC voltages used by the PLC. The PLC can be mounted by using the mounting feet or by using the DIN mount. Recall that the other PLC form factor is modular. Modular PLC systems are usually more powerful and have more capabilities than standalone PLCs. Consequently, modular PLCs are more expensive and physically bigger than standalone PLCs. Modular PLC system usually consists of a chassis, power supply module, processor module, and I.O. modules. The function of the chassis is to hold and connect the modules together. Modular PLC systems are more functionally flexible than standalone PLCs because they are highly customizable. Engineers can pick and choose modules that will go into the chassis to suit a particular project. For example, if a project requires a high number of output channels, then the engineers can install five output modules into the chassis. If a project requires a low number of output modules, then the engineers can just install one output module. Because of the flexibility, different configuration of power supply, chassis, processor, and I.O. modules can be assembled together to form a system that meets a project's requirement. The ability to customize a PLC system is desirable to engineers. An example of a modular PLC system is the Allen Bradley Slick 500 PLC. The PLC system shown on the screen consists of a 7-slot chassis, a power supply module, a processor module, and other various modules. The modules can be removed from the chassis simply by sliding them out of the chassis slot. Similarly, the modules can be installed by sliding them into the chassis slot. The PLC system can be mounted by using the chassis mounting feet. 
modular PLC system are suitable for large complex control application due to their versatility and relatively more powerful computational capability than standalone PLCs. As a result, modular PLC systems typically have a bigger footprint than standalone PLCs and also cost a lot more. Modular PLC system can cost upward of $20,000, whereas standalone PLCs only cost around $1,000. The Allen Bradley Control Logic is an example of a modular PLC system that can cost over $20,000 to build. Figure 5 shows the Allen Bradley Control Logic PLC system.